Well, welcome back. Thank you for uh, being a part of this sermon. We've talked about the lens of prayer as a plea. We've talked about the lens of prayer as a personal conversation, and now we're talking about the lens of prayer as a practice. Uh, some people would use the term practice. Some would say spiritual discipline, and I, I think it's very important that we regularly practice prayer, that we have a consistent, daily, scheduled, on-purpose, intentional conversation with God and prayer time. And I think it's very important. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You make known to me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hands are pleasures forevermore. I said in the beginning of this message that we're all going to struggle with one of these three lenses. Some of us may struggle with pleading. We, we may have a hard time crying out to God. Others, the idea of God is like a personal relationship can be a bit difficult. And for others, this one, I think, can be really difficult. The idea of praying consistently can sometimes... There are those who can feel like, well, this is supposed to be spirit-led. And, and I, I would argue um, the, the temple, the tabernacle, the temple, the, um, all the things that, that the spirit dwelled in in the Bible are the most organized, structured buildings in all of the Bible. There's so much organization to them, and yet the spirit thrived in them. And so I, I think it's important that we... Maybe perhaps those of us who struggle with this, that we don't allow our personality to over succeed or, or over exceed or our, our emotions or our natural leanings or even, you know, the, our upbringing uh, spiritually. Instead, we allow God to guide us in discipline and guide us in practice and guide us in, in daily consistent living. Praying as a practice can be very tough initially. I, I will give you full warning. We, we do the prayers and the worship guides. Uh, we do the corporate prayer at the end of our services, which we'll do here in a bit. And it, it's always tough. It's always tough to do uh, initially. But I think there's a couple of ways that you can pray and use prayer as a, a practice. You can, you can pray scripture. In other words, you can go to Psalms or you can go to Proverbs even, or you could, you could go into the things that the prayers that Jesus prayed and you could read them. And that's one way of just consistently praying um, as a practice scripture. You could also do prayer by writing. My parents do this as um, sometimes praying can be a little bit tougher to formulate uh, vocally. But if you're naturally a great writer, prayer, prayer by writing is amazing. I, I remember, I must have been a teenager. I had to be, based off this prayer, my mom was praying. <laughs> um, I remember, yeah, I was a teenager, and I, I was looking and found a notebook, and I was like, oh, what's this? And I opened the notebook, and it was my mom's handwritten prayers for us. And rather than vocalize them, she would just write them down. And I read this prayer that she wrote for me, this prayer that she wrote over me. I was so moved uh, that by the fact that she took time to write it down and put it into paper. And that prayer really helped me. And she never knew I even read it. And I, I, didn't, I never told her. And yet that prayer helped me. And it accomplished the things that she was asking. I was having a really hard time with someone, this older person and this person was I was really struggling with with the way they treated people the way they treated me and I read this prayer and it began to help me grow and it began to change the relationship and so prayer by writing is a great way of praying as a practice prayer in a place is also another one if you're if you're like me I, I pray best out in creation. I, I pray best running, walking, paddle boarding. I don't do as well sitting in my office, but there are those who of you who you could have a prayer closet or a prayer space in your house. You could have a room and just going to that on purpose every morning, as you know, early in the morning, will I seek thee, the Bible says. The, the Bible says early in the morning we give praise. And so going, um, I like to go for a prayer walk. I just uh, head out and I, I walk about a mile and I just pray as I walk. And 
having that place as a consistent place for me to prayer to pray builds consistently and helps me to pray without ceasing. It helps me to have this practice, this discipline of prayer. Also, prayer is gratitude, I think, can really help. It can be a little bit difficult to pray um, at certain times because sometimes we're like, I need the Spirit to guide me in what to think and pray, and I'm not sure what it is He's saying. And so often um, I, what I like to do is when I go for this, this mile-long walk, I like to begin that mile long walk by maybe the first half mile, just thanking God for everyone and everything that he puts into my life. If I see something, I'm like, man, there's a bird. Thank you, God, for that bird. And then all of a sudden I'll think of a person. Oh, thank you, God, for this person. They mean so much to me. Make prayer a priority by creating a process to practice prayer consistently. Soon you will develop powerful spirit-led prayers. So when it comes to prayer, we have to make it a priority. And if we do make it a priority, we will create a process that will lead to a practice. And discipline eventually always leads to fruit. And so sometimes when we pray as a practice, like, well, God, it's 6 a.m., and now you want me to pray, and I've been doing this for weeks, and I don't, it's, nothing's happening. Discipline eventually leads to fruit. Practice leads to passion, which leads to power. Uh, growing up playing sports, um, I often would think, well, I don't really need to practice. I'll just, in the moment, be super like on pumped and ready to go, and that'll lead, that'll power me through this game. And we, you know, we play soccer, and I actually found the opposite was true. The more I practiced, the more uh, passion I got at the game because I was confident, I was comfortable, I was prepared, and now I was ready to go which led me to have power to get through that game and to do more and do better in that game. This is the idea of prayer as a practice. It's not anti-biblical. It's actually very biblical. In fact, you, you'll find Jesus instructing us, hey, pray this, this prayer, our Father who art in heaven. And I mean, he just goes right down and pray this consistently. We, we see Jesus reading scriptures. We see him sitting down in the temple and reading scriptures, and we see him practicing out all of these different types of prayers. And so... Prayer is a plea. Prayer is a personal conversation. And then prayer as a practice. All of these are so important. Uh, we're going to ask you now to, um, I believe the worship team is going to come up and they're going to play. And I'm going to ask you to just find someone nearby and pray with them. Get to know them. Ask them a couple of questions. Get comfortable with them. And then spend a few moments in prayer. And then we'll all worship together. Always remember that you matter.